I'm Joe and this is the Mutoid Race Company's Airborne Division which is called the Lost Tribe of MIG and we're here, this is a door we built out of the Berlin Wall. Step through this door with me, I'll take you into the land of MIG. Coming across here, the last section of the Berlin Wall still is in existence. So where we are actually standing now is the no man's land that used to be between the two walls. No man could walk on this land without being shot. So here we are, like on no man's land, surrounded by pieces of peace, the MiG-21 fighter plane. And the project that we're making here on this piece of land is to try and take this plane and this brother, which we also have, in to build them into a show. <laughs> These will be the main part of the show, these two aeroplanes. One representing death and destruction and age, rotting. And the other one, which I'll show you in a minute, which will be representing uh, life and hope and freedom. And with these two, we're gonna make a little story. And uh, this story will be about, about the end of militarism, about how all these machines, all of these weapons of death and destruction are becoming as obsolete as the dinosaur. eine künstlerische Friedensdemonstration. Was wir hier haben, sind nicht die Flügel eines Süßenjägers, sondern es ist ein Bumerang. Den wollen wir jetzt hier an der Mauer platzieren. Es wäre schön, wenn wir das jetzt zusammen machen würden und Sie das einfach mal gewähren ließen. Achtung, Achtung! Hier springt die Grenzpost der Deutschen Demokratischen Republik. Ich fordere Sie auf, das Hoheitsgebiet der Deutschen Demokratischen Republik unverhältlich zu verlassen. Kommen Sie zurück damit! Provozieren Sie doch noch nicht noch! Kommen Sie doch zurück! Morning! A gift of a boomerang. We want our boomerang back. relative thing on the mm. watch. It's relative mm. to something 50 years ago. We are looking into the future, so we still build the sculpture. It takes another three days, all right, it takes another three days. Mm. Yeah. Then we wheel it to the line. This is the organic nature of the thing. And one thing Mutoid Waste has learned is to fit with the organic nature of work, otherwise you just smash <laughs> your head in. <laughs> me. First time I was really scared of them because it was completely different. They're only men. Met them in London. When one of them got me to tow their broken down truck with my truck across London and uh, promised me a drink. I was wondering what was going on. Which I never got.
We went to Amsterdam, we built Stonehenge out of cars there, and we did a couple of shows and a bit of a festival there, right? Then we had made contacts in Berlin, it was West Berlin at that time, it was in the summer of 89. So we then left, some people didn't leave Amsterdam, you know, they were quite happy there. But the rest, you know, the few of us who were into it, drove down to Berlin through the transit road. Well, when we left from Amsterdam, our biggest concern was that we'd have a problem to travel up the transit road, because at that time it was still East Germany. Fifteen vehicles all the way from Amsterdam to Berlin, through the transit, no problem. The transit police were really pleased to see us, a circus like ours, crazy vehicles, and they let us through very easily. We well, basically just lived in the middle of a park, in the middle of an area called Kreuzberg, right, which is the rough sort of area, Turkish area, full of punks and that. I just lived in this park that had been the main railway station before it was bombed. Uh, much landscaping going on, big mounds of earth, quite an interesting desert-like environment, very hot summer. And there we lived and worked. Well, here we have the, the gate. It's finally open. <laughs> Kaferman, and the body was made out of a Volkswagen Beetle car, which they call a Kafer over here. And he was built on uh, on railway wheels, on the wheels of a railway thing, yeah. And he was sitting on the last bit of railway line that was left in this huge great station, you know. And it actually went over a canal bridge, and then the wall was straightway was on the other side of the canal bridge. But the actual tracks went right through the wall and went out into East Germany, you know. So the idea really was to build a sculpture and give it to the east. On another trolley was this bird, all built out of silver and chrome bumpers and that. Big flying bird, which we called the Silver Bird of Peace. And the idea was that we wanted them to open the gates and let us push this bird through the wall, you know, to, as a, you know, all that sort of stuff, as a gesture. Of course, nobody wanted it. You know, the, the East Germans didn't want it, the West Germans didn't want us to do it, the NATO didn't want it, uh, Hanukkah didn't want it, everybody didn't want it, but we did it anyway. Last night, yeah. ten of them came and cut the tracks <laughs> and then painted a white line. We know this is uh, their answer to our request to accept a sculpture. Is empty. No. <laughs> Two months after we finished it, the wall came down. And people in Berlin had been saying this wall can never come down, you know what I mean? That was the general opinion was that the wall would never go. I kind of feel we've been robbed of it a little bit because our idea was to set one sculpture in the, in the west, one in the east, and then one day when there was no wall, we wanted to go back to Berlin to reunite the two. But they haven't accepted the, the one in the east as yet, so we haven't, we've been robbed of the, after the wall's down, we've been robbed of the, the moment for reuniting the sculpture.
two friends of mine that I used to work with joined the company. But when I joined the company, they left. That's me. Unfortunately. And so I stayed on because I was enjoying what I was doing. I met them when they came the first time to Berlin. Worked with them, put a crane on a truck and started doing with them some shows. I was living in uh, Shepherd's Bush in London at the time um, and I had a workshop which was a, an old undertaker's office and um, I, used to, I used to work for the television at the time making scenery as a job. <laughs> Time, there was a mechanic, uh, Robin, who was working in a little workshop just below me and he used to always work late and I always used to work late and so like late some evenings you know we'd uh, sit and have a cup of tea together and we both got sick of our jobs and uh, we'd get talking and playing with ideas and uh, found that we had a very good crossover where he had the technical knowledge um, and mechanical knowledge to, to build big structures and, uh, and a fair amount of inspiration of his own and I had uh, lots of ideas and a little bit of working knowledge on mechanics and so on so between the two of us we could cross over and, uh, and take on much bigger projects. Originally that the idea was to, to produce a little sculpture to, to, to create mutation, you know, like uh, in sculpture form. And the waste angle was originally to uh, to sell the byproducts of it as furniture. You know, you'd make an idea purely for the creativity, and then uh, the byproduct of it was then going to be sold as a table lamp or a, a bit of furniture or something. And this was the idea to keep the show going and the performances going. So quite useful when you're doing birds, find the head first, find something that looks a bit like a head. This is a, a designer saw. It's, um, it's like a sort of dinosaur made out of uh, pieces of rust and metal. Sort of like the sort of bones you see in a museum. And, uh, this cylinder here is from a little moped. Maybe a bit like a bat or something like that. There's all various things for heads. Like that. this bit on it here, it looks like a, a bird with its wings up. So then, then, then you've got the form, the idea of the form, what you're making with the head and the wings, and then you just have to find the bits. Alex, could you give us a hand a minute? became like a sort of legend, you know, like uh, people saw these come into a warehouse and they'd see these people living this bizarre lifestyle and so they'd go, go off and tell their friends and the thing would get bigger and bigger the more people exaggerate and, uh, and so it became a sort of legend. And this was what we sort of played on, and we played total disinterest in the press, really. And, uh, and of course, that only helped to make the press more interested in us, you know, like all the fashionable press 
you know, that we used to get people coming to the parties, waving press passes, and we used to charge them double. People really like being treated badly sometimes. <laughs> I think we were the first people to have, to have a warehouse or large warehouse parties in London, which came from being a group of people that, in fact, decorated warehouses or decorated their space with scrap. We was a large number, therefore we needed to move into a warehouse or a similar size space in London. And uh, once you decorated your place, you'd have a party, you know. And, and we ended up getting a name for name for that, and it ended up like. Well, the first party we had about 600 people and then <coughs> it just grew and after about three parties we'd end up with sort of being able to pull 3,000 people plus. Charging into a party is, is illegal but you can charge into an exhibition so that's the way we worked our, it round the law so to speak and by the time you've got 3,000 people in a place the police don't shut it anyway. So we worked together on different things built in a bicycle powered submarine that we used, we used to row up and down the canal, you know, pedal up and down the canal. It's just like the cockpit, the conning tower of a submarine, you know. We used to just go up and down the uh, canal on it and and uh, things sort of went on and eventually we decided that it would be worth taking, making it mobile. Five of us stayed in Berlin to complete the sculpture of Käferman, and the rest of the group, 15 people or so, travelled to Wickensee in Holland, which is 25 kilometres from Amsterdam. They had been invited to a festival that was to be held in a village that was positioned on the sea, and behind which were some dunes, and behind the dunes was one of the messiest, filthiest, horriblest factories that you've ever seen, just belching all colours of smoke into the sky all day and night. Uh, severe pollution and the beach in front of the village with two or three thousand people living there was threatened with uh, the dumping of sludge and silt from the canals in Amsterdam when they dredged them. The people there had united themselves and were very concerned about this pollutive threat and decided to hold a festival to bring attention to this and they asked us if we would like to build some sculpture. result was a, an enormous fist on the dunes behind the village holding a, a dead fish that could be seen for miles. Hello Lucy, Uli is here, he's coming over to you then. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Well, I arrive one day, found the mutoids in this bizarre, weird and wonderful environment, thought this looks interesting and ended up visiting them a few times and then eventually I found myself, I was part of it, making things and wearing stupid kitchen equipment and painting your face and, and just enjoying being bizarre really. No one was doing their press at the time. And they were definitely a press worthy concern. So I thought I'd do their press and got them a press kit together. I decided it was a good way to see the inner warehouses of London at the time I suppose. <laughs> and now we're seeing the outer warehouses of Europe.
Yeah, okay. No! Alright, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell them. Okay. Sorry. 1988, I was part of a, another group that squatted with the Mutoid Waste Company in um, some factory in London. So I have a truck, which is the Auto Wrecker, and I have to live in that, although sometimes it is very uncomfortable, but it is somewhere to live. Motive power, Alex. The, the same four or five of us who were in Berlin came first to Paris. We had an idea that the, there would be somewhere in the north of Paris where we could park our vehicles for a short time. And we have succeeded in finding a, a large disused piece of railway property, a Sensier factory. And this is where the group is now collecting. <laughs> doing here speaking to you in this bloody microphone uh, yes horrid uh, questions that I would ask myself where are you going hmm. in London I joined them why I don't know because they were all right <laughs> I'd, I'd met them a couple of years before and it was really exciting what they were doing and it was really different and uh, I quite liked, I, I wanted to take on the way of life, especially travelling and then working with waste and using waste. I first met the mutoids when um, they pulled into a yard next to a house I was living in on the Isle of Dogs and uh, they ripped a lot of electricity off me, or my landlord. Yesterday was the, the 18th of November, which is uh, the anniversary of the, the King's Cross underground fire, which happened two years ago in London, where Ivan, our drummer, was one of 31 people who lost his life in that fire and we like to celebrate this on this date every year. We were in London last year at King's Cross and we held a big drumming episode in the street and this year we were happy to be driving up the Champs-Élysées in Paris. unknown to us that it happened to be the same night as the EEC leaders were meeting on the east-west situation in Germany so there was a lot of police interest and uh, we were taken off down a small side road and kept there for a while while the uh, the eminent heads of state were whisked past in their in their cars I don't think they wanted them to see us so we're gonna hang out here until it's over right um, can, can somebody speak French then come speak to me geezers yeah sure come here yeah. Said. Wait. Yeah, but the thing is that if they're determined to get us, they'll get us anyway. Let's so go we might as well just try and cooperate before they get really pissed off. Um, we could, right. Follow that car. Okay. Take all the light. Take all the light. 
and then we were escorted with a police escort back to our home in this factory in Russia. That's not recording voice, is it? No. Rudy's <laughs> making a silent movie. That's all right then, as long as it's silent. I don't like being incriminated. Every time you open your mouth, you incriminate yourself. Don't give up a light. Glastonbury Festival, we got given a, a field called the Creep Ground to set up in, and um, it was at the same time as the, it was the year after they had had the battle at Stonehenge, so that people weren't allowed to go to Stonehenge any longer for the solstice. So we decided to try and create a kind of Stonehenge at Glastonbury, and we brought in a lot of cars and scrap, and we built a car henge, a Stonehenge replica made out of cars. And that's when the music really started as well. The, the guy who died, Ivan, was there then, and he was the only professional drummer. And he started up on the solstice evening, he started a drum session. A zombie beat. A zombie beat, which went on for 48 hours. I was so scared of them and then I couldn't stop thinking about them and I returned to them again and again every year. They were doing the same sort of things that interested me, living a travelling sort of lifestyle with trucks, working with scrap, something that I've always done. Down there, after you put, let it go, got loads of power again. Is this the sculpture that Hazel made? Yeah. It's Alex's head. Yeah. Oh, Alex's head. Alex's head. Right. Move. Remarkable Play likeness. Remarkable likeness. As you can see, I'm now surrounded by luxurious surroundings, so my standard of living has really gone up. And my quality of my, my dress and my fingernails remains about the same. <laughs> have to be manky to work and then colourful to go out. It's inside, there's a piece like that, there's a piece like that, yeah, and a piece like that, of, of, of box section, a bit more like that, actually. And uh, yeah, it's coming past underneath. Put your finger, give us your finger. It's coming like that. It might be that it's just catching. One really good thing about the mutoids is there are 20 odd people, and between the 20 odd people, we've all got a range of skills. <laughs> no, the world's open. The world's open. 
and it's really good when there's an exchange of skills happening. We've got good teachers here if we want to be taught. Sometimes you're, you're thrown in at the deep end and you suddenly have to do something that you're not quite sure whether you can or not. You try it and if you can, if you succeed, then that's better and if you fail, then it doesn't really matter as well because it's the best thing or the most important thing is attempting it. Come on, come on. Nearly dinner time. <laughs> so we're going to ruin our appetites. Quick. Eat it all and eat more. Six thousand eight hundred. Yeah. Two thousand six hundred. Yeah. Everything that money can buy. At the end of the day, we're going to find on the scrap heap anyway, because like uh, any car you see that's new on the road, will be on the scrap heap in ten years' time, and we'll have it for nothing. So, in the in the uh, scrap yards of the world, there's there's everything from. You know, Apollo rockets, aeroplanes, ships, computers, you know, and quite a lot of it's still functional, you know, or with a bit of knowledge can either be made to work again or to be made into something else. Spontaneous combustion of tapes. Look, back in the TK. One good thing about moving all the time is movement is mutation. Mutation is change, and everything keeps on changing because you're in a different space, a different country, a different place and you can't afford to stand still or to uh, take things, you know, to treat things as being too sacred, you know. If something weighs three tonnes, you know, whether it's the nicest piece in the world, you've got to think, am I going to take it or get rid of it? So you get rid of it and you make a place for something else to come in. Whereas, so, quite a lot of the, the mutation of the company has come through its constant movement. Most important.
one's really bad, my night goes in. On the what on the same side? That's why we got right. if we can change then that one, one will go. Then the other one will go. One after the other. <laughs> Someone cleared the kitchen up. A bit of talking to get it. Who is it? Mine art's truck manual. <laughs> Shall we go then? Go where? Na bomb! These fans all say that sound. You don't know, no, he's gone pale. Some of the other people are in the street. Pressure there, not vacuum. So it would piss out, not suck air in. We've got a point fresh day here. You've got a spare tire. I've got a spare tire, that you fit back, yeah. Yeah, but the rim's cut. Can you remove the rim? Has that one changed? Yeah, that was my one that went on. I just remember, right, seeing... Yeah, but there's, I mean, if no, there's I no spare seeing, for that, if there's no spare for that, then we, we can take it to the services, come, come back. <laughs> Hey, je te donne 150 pour ça, sinon je laisse. Ouais, mais ça, ça va pas, c'est trop, trop, euh, pour trop, c'est 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 trop, Waste material, yeah. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, lock up the door. The new toys do have a really important philosophy to 20th century living. That is, that we do anything except wash up. No. We could have got this, this guy had a rim and which, which needed the middle cutting out of it and the tyre changing. It didn't have any of the right size tyres. <laughs> Does anything come out when you film with that much light? Morning, mm. Ellie. Oh. <laughs> fuck this bloody fucking fuck up.
also it's you know to make sort of groundwork here to influence people in the travelling scene in England, which we've known is going to be destroyed since 1985. You know when they attacked the convoy at the Beanfield, you know the writing was on the wall there, and it's coming to pass now. You know as you can see, you know with the way they treat the festivals and whatever. this tradition really. We always offer the first from the pot to the floor. Um, can I speak to Polo or Maro or Antonio? It's mutoid waste. Okay, it's just to say that the mutoids will probably arrive in. Yeah, will probably arrive in Santa Cangelo on Saturday or Sunday. Okay, because I need to make sure that everything is okay at the riverside. Do you know? Uh, that, uh, my money's running out because I'm phoning from France. I, tell, I try to telephone tomorrow. Okay. For one or two days, you stay in a place where there is no water. Water is important for us that we unload really soon. I know me. Hi. My name is Sal. I've just got grease all over my glasses. We try just to, uh, to present uh, the way of making theatre of these people. So they stay here, they rehearse here, they build their show here in the place where they are going to play. Okay! The pizza leaving! Okay, Every young bamboo fucking bamboo patio, look, eh? I can't get in there, I'll just look. No, if you come in square, no, if you come in square. We're looking to try and find some place abroad that we can use as a base for, say, even if it's some place for a year. already looks like a big ship going towards an octopus. That we can use as a base and then we can leave things that we don't need and um, we can leave people who are not necessary for a specific job there. And we'll be looking for the miracle clouds then? They're brilliant, aren't they? Shall I move along and close that up? Yeah, Maggie? Yeah, close up the gap there. Yeah. Yeah. I need a hand to do it though. Yeah. Yeah. 
They already presented a little them, themselves by just passing their cars through, through the town. Some Italian guys had seen us in Berlin and then um, they heard we were in Barcelona and they got in touch with us and um, asked us about the theatre festival if they'd be interested. When we came here, the site we were supposed to stay on was the riverbed, but when we arrived, the, these guys said to us, stay in the car park because there might be a better site. So we stayed in the car park for a couple of days and then they brought us to see this place and it was just brilliant. And uh, they said the mayoress was trying to get permission from the owner that we could stay here and we got permission. We were trying to make an arrangement like we have done in many places where we take it out and then after the show we give it back uh, just the same weight but More everyone said no so yeah. far. Well, we try again. really my, my nature to live with a group. I live with a group through the necessity of what the project is and luckily you know like the group is made of people who are, who are easy to live with and uh, 
you know, sane, sane and intelligent people, you know, who are, uh, and friends. A clean change of underwear. That's it, hold the knot in front here when you go. That's it. Oh, fuck. You're on the ball! <laughs> what a buzz! <laughs> Whoa! Nice one, Charlie! Woohoo! Oh, that was... I think we should go for a bit higher, really. Yeah. Put two tubes together. Yeah. Tie off two together. Yeah? yeah. Give it a bit more spin. A cu couple of bits of rope. Yeah? That was higher though. Isn't I think it? we should do it off all of them. Yeah. Don't you? Like as Together. a stunt, all the drummers just leap off or something. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find some braces of the right size, preferably with a bit of air still in them, which makes them more comfortable. Too tight. I have to take an 18 inch braces. Ah, that's more like it. So, as you can see, is then hold up my trousers. So I'm going to ride on the bike. Not too uh, tight. Just need another one of these now. Better for braces. You have to make do with what is around at the time. It's now seven years after its conception and uh, it's still unique and it's still press worthy and people are still interested in it whereas if it had gone for a big money making hype it would be old fashioned now, it would be old news, it would be um, something that's passed whereas you know the idea of mutation is that things change and things are always new so in this way I think it's avoided the pitfalls of um, commerciality really. But I think the other reason for this is that um, you have a success with something and then you have to repeat that success and you know people will stop allowing you to change so you end up having to make the same style of stuff all the time. You know, and so we always take on a few jobs but the idea has never been just to be working for other people. We've always done it for pleasure really. Toys were almost exclusively a male group. For years he kicked it. And it's only really been since just before we came away that there's been women permanently with the group. There's been people's girlfriends who came to visit and stay occasionally and this sort of thing, but there wasn't really many women living with the new toys. They were very male oriented. is in, in, in the personnel really in a way the personnel we've got now are more even tempered more even temperament than the original mutoids so just as much exhibitionists and just as much um, you know like artistic but uh, more more even tempered for living with you know because obviously when you're traveling you know you have to live with these people very tight sometimes you've got no money you're out on the road you've got flat tires and, and you have to be able to get on with these people in that situation you can't have people quite often you get people who are really talented in one way or the other and they would be really good people to have on the show but you know if, you, if you're stuck on the side of the road with them it's a different story Ta -da! Ta -da! It's only a 30 second thing using that music and fucking... Now beginning of 2001, but it's got to stick on and then you've got to go... 
<laughs> so you sort of got to discover these and you got them top. And you've got, if you're drumming behind, right? Well, I mean, we've got yeah. your tape on, but they're doom, 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 doom. Flying attempts, like that was gonna, that was gonna sort of inspire, right? Because when you zap me and Strapper, right, everybody else sort of freaks out and disappears. That was that was gonna be the idea. And somebody like Giles, who had, who had been left sort of sitting watching in awe, yeah. or me and Strapper, because we can't really go do anything else because we're in the end of the rubber. We sort of totally get inspired to try flying. Brothers and sisters, I have returned. Just walking in the yard, and I'm on my door. Where am I feeling? Find it cold. So get to a place. See you later, guy. See you walking through the yard. And the boy lies here. But if we try to stop it, let's go now. Technology, yeah, yeah, and people trying to fly, right? Which culminates, we have a few duff attempts with, with bungees or whatever, and it culminates in something flying, which will be the bike flying up the cable, yeah, which then occupies the second area, which is the one you were on today, the tar works, yeah, this one here. And then what we want to do is build up with all speakers and the V1s and sirens and that, build up that thing until it's just gone totally mad, crescendo, and then like maybe go into a sort of war situation or something like that. <laughs>
and in a way, the performance what? stops when we do when we go on to that tune. Yeah, yeah. everybody listen to me, right? And then we just all dance it, and then when you you know when you feel that you, you know you're getting bored with it, then you walk off of it. Yeah. yeah. But that really, you know, we can have everyone up there, like you know what I mean, for that last mm -hmm. song. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you're dressed yeah. in or anything. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like we all have a dance. Yeah. The voice things with this, this is little kiddies toy voice changer is brilliant. It either drops your voice like loads of octaves or raises it up like Mickey Mouse. What is the Mutoid Waste Company? What is it? It's us. Chaos. A bunch of people who travel about making sculptures from waste. It's uh, all these people parked up here. Well, it's Mutoid and it's waste and it's a company. Um, travel very slowly with too many vehicles. It's just a bundle of ideas, really.
like directing them to go in like a north. Do you not think it would take too long for them to annoy 15 people? No, not so yeah. Well I I can do some uh I can come on and do some paint singing as well, you know, so I would have been <laughs> Those yeah, are the towel. Yeah, or a little uh, calm dark side bowl. One yeah. of them springs, the TK springs make a quite good song. I've got something anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Deep bell or that church bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah heavy. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be like, it's got to sound heavy metal. One circuit, right, without be, without flowering anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. circuit, keep going. Right, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm just being one in the One circuit all the way around, the audience. All right. <laughs> If you don't concentrate, you're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you putting the helmets by their heads or what? Just behind um, their heads. Debbie, you're doing the helmets, aren't you? In fact, Anne Marie, Anne Marie, what you could do, what you could do, yeah, is that you go on the other side of them while these are on this side with the bucket and down, and you stand on their head, head, giving them a fire, yeah, giving them a fire, so you putting the helmet by the head, yeah. The first time I saw the mutoids was at Glastonbury. And they had some heads on a stick, they had this um, uh, car hinge, and it looked totally frightening. Then a year later, I've, I met some people from the Mutoids in their Battlebridge Road, and I think Robin was asking about a generator, and I do a, did a circuit diagram of a generator. Then uh, another year later, I kept going to the Mutoids during my holidays. I used to work. Then go and see the Mutoids in Amsterdam, spend, spend lots of money, then go back and work. Then go see the Mutoids in Berlin. And then one day I decided to jack it all in. And I went down to Spain, to Barcelona. Yep. Tracked up! Yep. Where's Bang. Thomas? Bang! Oh no! Hey? Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been through, I was just writing it down. Right, I've got we, we come now. through, like, and then Thomas is going fucking beam, mad. Beam. Oh, and then bang. Sorry. As the megaphone comes on, me and Jay run off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who could be a We could do a minute or at least two minutes of silence and a bell, really. Yeah. No movement. Yeah, you've got a lot right, There's no noise, no movement, just the bell and dead body. And since November last year, um, I've been here in Santa Angela. We've, ha we've had a whale of a time. We've just finished the festival. Yeah, and I feel, I feel that I'm like with this construction here. I'm enjoying it very much because all sorts of ideas I used to have, even when I was working on Formula One cars, I had funny ideas about funny vehicles. And now here I've constructed this device here, which is controlled like a like a helicopter. And I was very uncertain. I was, in a way, I was scared of the people because I didn't, I didn't really know how to um, connect with them. And I'd heard that they do very interesting fire shows, and they did do interesting fire shows. And well, now I'm here with my fire extinguisher, which isn't a fire extinguisher, which it f throws flames for about um, ten meters.
reason why he wants to invite people to Japan is that now Japan is uh, more econ economically strong but, and also uh, technologically it's the high level. Mm -hmm. But the young people has a lot of problem with their mind, with their ideas for uh, as a as a thought of the world Future? worldwide thought or oh, international thought. Oh, oh, I think yeah. they have to think about the environment of the world itself. But yeah. the Japanese young people don't yes. do that. This is that uh, kind of yeah. He wants this to make them more aware. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. They've got loads more time. To zero? Really good, yeah, to zero. They've got loads more time. So we'll bang. Shall we bang it now? Step through this door with me, I'll take you into the land of Mig. Here's, you can pay some money here if you like, a donation. And over here we have the sentry, it will be guarding, we'll be looking after the place. yards with like loads of Russian tanks and lorries and things really wasted, thrown away. And then after this we had the idea maybe we get some more of that stuff and also we found out that people are sort of really scared about this all this army things yeah so we thought we give them the whole sort of a different meaning by using it by making building a show around it. Ended up here with these two uh, MiG fighters from the, the old German, the East German Air Force, and uh, this large section of uh, the Berlin Wall. And our idea really is to is to create an area in what, as this is Potsdamer Platz, which is the heart of old Berlin. So our idea is to build a place here where people could come, uh, sit down, and and look at the wall and the sculptures and, and the planes. We got across that way last night. Yeah? yeah.
power station. Äh, wann bist du ungefähr da? We've never uh, really been seen as threatening. The mutoid thing, you know. We've, you know, we, I could say, oh yeah, we know we've had a terrible time with the police, and all that, but we haven't, in truth. Uh, because, but the reason why I, I think is because we provide something, you know, and we provide uh, something that everybody can understand, even police. The Cure Close to Me. Zu Gast heute in Weekend sind Lucy und Strapper von der Mutoid Waste Company. Der Name ist bestimmt einigen ein Begriff. Die Company war schon öfter mal in Berlin mit ihren Performances. Zuletzt im Rahmen des Feuer- und Schrottfestivals zusammen mit DNTT auf dem Marx-Engels-Platz. Lucy and Strapper does the new toy waste company show from tonight on. From tonight on we're, we're building a, a tank henge uh, right next to the Reichstag um, with all the, the scrap from the military disarmament of, from the east. At the end of three weeks we will have a completed a, a complete henge and uh, a whole site with, with scrap sculpture and the way, the way that we work. It's very difficult to explain, you must come and see.
good, isn't it? Isn't it brilliant? Isn't it well, fucking good, work. man? And yeah. if you walk through that, that is a door. Um, is like um, doors of perception. You know what I mean? And now you have a psychedelic doorway for the uh, Reichstag, and you have the future of Europe is like now is finished from the past. This land now is pure. In fact, there are three things that fascinate me from when I was a child. Anyone who got over or under the Berlin Wall was a hero. Anyone who escaped the Earth's gravitational field, such as Alan Shepard or Yuri Gagarin, these people, and also Australia. These three things fascinated me. And I'm happy to say that the Berlin Wall is no longer a problem. We're working on anti-gravity. And uh, <laughs> I was fascinated to go to Australia. See it now. And a hard working, hard bearing, prospering society. Doesn't look so, <laughs> so recognisable. <laughs> What is 
Detroit Waste Company. Uh, the most brilliant Cut. organization I've ever Cut. seen. Seen. I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you.